What is going on everybody? We have finally made it our first ever NCAA 14 series here on that franchise guy, aka the greatest sports video game ever freaking made. I am so excited to finally make it to this thing. Please do hit that like button down below guys. If you are just as excited as I am, please do hit that like button for each installment of the series uh, to make sure that this series does as well as I'm hoping that it will do so that we can go the full length of the series as we anticipate. Uh, so with that note, let's get into the house rules, talk about what this series is going to be all about, and then we'll get into rowing the boat. So first things first is sliders. Everyone wants to know about sliders. We are using Operation Sports Realistic Sliders. I'll drop that link in the description down below. Get that out of the way right there. And then the goal here is to go five seasons. And that's going to depend on view counts and how well this series does, guys. So again, guys, please do hit that like button as we go. It really does help uh, share the, the video and get it going in that algorithm and all that good YouTube stuff. So seriously, it does help. Number three, we are going to be doing something I'm very excited about, and that is using my patrons as prospects and recruits. So it's going to be such a fun way to integrate my lovely patrons my loyal patrons thank you guys so much integrate you guys into this series uh, it's gonna be really fun if you are a patron and you have not gotten in that spreadsheet hit me up whether it's on the discord or on patreon i will find a way for you to fill that out so we can get you into future seasons i will do the best to recruit you guys i certainly will not be able to get all of you guys especially those of you that are not midwest centric i imagine that's going to be most of our pipeline uh, but i will do my best to follow your journeys as we go so i'm really excited about that it's gonna be really fun uh, and then the the goal here is to go three games per season, and those are going to be pre-decided games. And then I also plan to play the conference championship, should we make it, and our bowl game. As far as how much we play inside those games, that is going to be fluid. I think I will just play as much uh, of that game as feels appropriate. Uh, and then one last little rule here is any prospects, uh, players that want to uh, go for the draft early, if they are projected top three picks, I will let them go. I think that's the realistic thing to do. If they're fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh round, I will try to persuade them to return to school. Uh, and then rule number five here is uh, Wisconsin, our biggest rival. We will beat them into submission and win that ax every year. That is my goal. And then, as always, row the boat, baby. Don't stop rowing. PJ Flex going to be coming for you. Row that boat. Here we go. Let's get into it. So I want to start by getting familiar with our team here. And I think going through the red shirt menu is a great way to do that. It'll give us a nice outlook for the future, what we have now, as well as what we can look forward to moving forward and what positions as well we need to recruit. So at uh, the quarterback spot, we have Tanner Morgan, a fan favorite. He's a junior. I expect he will be here through his senior year. And then we have a pair of 74 overall freshmen that look like potential options for the future. So quarterback, I actually feel pretty good. You always want to try and add top quarterbacks to your team, but not necessarily a need. Same with running back where we are loaded. I'm going to go ahead and redshirt Kai Thomas here, who looks like a stud out of Kansas. Uh, but for the most part, we are pretty good at running back. Ibrahim, I imagine, will be back for a senior year after this year. So good at running back. Uh, no fullback on roster right now. I think Seth Green down here is actually going to play a lot of fullback for us. He's a big body, basically tight end receiver flex quarterback type of guy um, so we do have actually three freshman receivers uh, these guys attracted to this program with PJ Flex seeing what Tyler Johnson did here last year with Rashad Bateman at the top Chris Ottman Bell another good player here so the receiver room looking pretty good as well I think we should go along uh, go ahead and redshirt all of these freshmen and they're gonna have some opportunities pretty soon we got a couple seniors leaving. Bateman might leave in the first season. Uh, tight end, definitely a spot that we got to focus on. We do have a uh, sophomore here in uh, Brevin Span Ford, a junior in Paulson, but just a position we want to be better at, so we want to recruit there. On the offensive line, looks like we are in pretty decent shape as I scroll through here. Um, yeah, we got, we got some young players in the making. A couple of tackles to red shirt here. We've got a junior at left guard with an 89 mark. Uh, senior uh, center, excuse me, is going to be a position of need, it looks like. Uh, right guard is a, a rock and right tackle, my man, Daniel Falala. Uh, so we'll adjust that as we go, as, as we need to recruit. But 
Um, the offense as a whole is in really good shape. Now, defensively, I can't quite say as much. Uh, we do have some junior pass rushers that we like with uh, Atamo, uh, Atamewo and Boye Mafe, but a couple of freshmen that I think we should redshirt here. Maybe uh, the answer is long term there. Defensive tackle is certainly not looking the best. We do have four freshmen at the bottom of the depth chart, all redshirted. But D-tackle may be our weakest position right now. Linebacker's pretty thin as well, however. Uh, looks like they had that red shirt on him, but we're going to undo that, have him be our starter. So linebacker, probably the weakest position on our team, paired with the corner room that is far from ideal. We do have a couple freshmen here to red shirt. Uh, but linebacker, corner, defensive tackle, uh, and the safety room as well. We do have a, a freshman here, um, but for the most part, want to recruit every position on the defense. Offense is in much better shape, so we want to be a much more tough physical team. So now that we're more familiar with the team, let's hop in to the recruiting board. And I want to start by paying tribute to my patrons and highlight all of you guys. Nine of you made the first season. We've got another eight signed up for next season. Uh, so thank you guys for your support. We got Shay Zupnik, a undersized corner out of Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, but a quick 4-4-2. And he's actually interested in the team. So we're going to add Shay to our own draft board. Another patron at the corner position, Liam Hyde. No interest in coming to our school. Well... I appreciate your support, Liam, but screw you. We didn't want you anyway. We'll follow your journey if you go to Boise, Washington, Oregon. And then we have Avery Collins, outside linebacker from Atlanta, Georgia. You're going to be linebacker number 21, outside linebacker number 21. Not currently interested, but we'll keep you on the radar. We'll see maybe a show up later if you're not getting heavily recruited. Yannick Welder, you turned out real nice. D-tackle number two. I'm um, sorry if these guys don't look like you. Some of you did not fill out the uh, uh, aesthetics of what you guys look like. So I hope, you know, my personal interpretation of what you guys look like is accurate. Yannick, also out of Seattle, not interested in the school. Only 14% interest. Um, but let's add you and just see what happens after we, we get through this first stage. D-tackle is a big need for us. And then we have Sean Ryan out of Miami, Florida. Came out to be a five-star prospect here. Probably a little bit too big of a piece of candy for us to swing for there. But Sean, good luck down there in Florida. Looks like you're going to be heavily recruited by the top schools down there. And then our good friend Matt Littell uh, actually is from England, but you cannot add that in the game. We went with Old Town, Maine. We don't actually need a kicker, but Matt Littell looking like a stud there. Kicker number 8, 80 overall projection. Good luck on your journey, Matt. Then Jake Rosen, five-star running back out of the state of New York. Again, probably too big for us to swing for, but thank you for your patronage, Jake. Really appreciate you. We'll follow your journey out there on the East Coast. And then Julian Knoll, big body tight end, 6'4", 280, a tight end, D-end hybrid out of Denver, Colorado. Not showing any interest, but potentially someone we want to target. If you're not getting heavily recruited, we'll keep an eye on you, Julian. And then our final Patreon prospect is my man Brandon Crosby, one of the realest subscribers to TFG. Always one of the first to comment, first to the streams. So Brandon, in honor of you, I am going to try to recruit you, even though for some reason you don't want to be a gopher. But the quarterback out of Chicago, Brandon Crosby, we're going to put on the board. So I went ahead and actually filled out the rest of our draft board here. It is a lot to package into an episode here. So we've got this all sorted. Just going to run through kind of who we're targeting here. We've got our three patron prospects and then... Uh, a couple of corners at the top here, absolutely interested in the University of Minnesota. Two big positions in need right there. Uh, Michael Jones, a promising looking running back who really wants to come to our school. Uh, local free safety, some defensive linemen we want to target. Uh, and then getting a little ambitious here with some of these higher end prospects that do show some interest early on. Uh, we'll see if we can target Christian Booth. Uh, David Oliver at guard, fullback Marcus Johnson, get that blocking unit improved, and then back to the defensive side of the ball, uh, Robbie Young at defensive tackle, outside linebacker Steven Jackson, we got an athlete in Paul Smith, uh, but it looks like he is a defensive lineman type of guy, uh, we do actually have a, a big defensive 
uh, an offensive tackle that I want to slide up here. A local kid out of Plymouth, Minnesota, who has us number one. Could be a really nice boost to the offensive line. Uh, and then as you move down, it's just kind of guys that are very interested in the school, but we aren't necessarily so interested in them. And we do have an interesting big-bodied running back out of Hawaii. Uh, ironically named James Robinson. I don't love how his physical traits are shaping up in the early scouting process, though, so I didn't have him particularly high. Uh, some four-star receivers here, but none of them scouted out all that well, uh, as well as some of these other top prospects that just didn't scout out very well, so I pushed them down. And then we do have a quarterback out of Florida who we have not even scouted yet because our quarterback situation does look all right. Uh, but a good looking draft board to start. I just want to talk about the pipeline real quick uh, to kind of give you a grasp on the types of pipeline that we have here. So we have a nice Midwest approach here. We have Ohio, Illinois, and our home state of Minnesota. Uh, that's a, a good reach right there. And then we actually have a pipeline down to Georgia, Florida, which is really nice, uh, especially having Florida there. Two states that would be great to add would be Texas and California. So you need to have, depending on our coaching tree, between, uh, what is it, three and six prospects from that state to add a pipeline. And then once you have that pipeline, players are going to be more interested in coming to your school if they are from that state. Uh, so we have the default P.J. Fleck coaching tree for the first season here. So we're at a, some disadvantages uh, from the recruiting aspect because uh, his coaching tree is so spread out as I'll pull up here. After the first year, we can uh, reassign our priorities here. He's got a lot of game management stuff. He is a level 27 head coach, but I would love to get um, the full 100% scouting the ability to put the kitchen sink in which gives you a big advantage in the recruiting you can increase the amount of points you spend each week and then this increases your total points each week and here is the pipeline so right now we need six players to create a pipeline so we are missing out on some of the best recruiting skills but the last thing to do now is set up our custom schedule this is not going to be in line with the Gophers 2020 schedule, mostly because of the COVID complications. They're only playing Big Ten games. Um, but they right now have a schedule for Coastal Carolina, FCS Midwest, and San Jose State, and UNLV, all in the first four weeks of the season. Big problem here is we only have one week for visiting in the uh, heart of the season. These are kind of the juicy weeks to get guys in to visit. So weeks 7 through 10. I'd like to add another home game in there. I'm going to scratch Coastal Carolina here in week two and add in uh, some competition here. I don't want it to be anything crazy. Maybe with someone a little more local, Eastern Michigan maybe. Let's do that. Eastern Michigan at home. Uh, so we'll have San Jose State, FCS Midwest, and UNLV in the opener. And then our Big Ten schedule. So we're going to go with that. And then we do also need to pinpoint which games we want to play. I think we should play that rivalry game week five against Iowa, Wisconsin for sure, week 13. And then I think we should play Penn State as well. So try to finish strong with those top Big Ten teams and start early with our first Big Ten game on the season. So we're going to go ahead and advance and start our season, start rowing that boat. So I did go ahead and sort out our recruiting points for the first week, really focusing on, of course, our three Patreon prospects, but more importantly on that defensive side of the ball, pouring in a lot of resources to the two corners, the two D tackles. Uh, we do have tight end tackle, fullback, a guard down here. So the blocking unit, definitely something we want to improve. Uh, but then again, DN, middle linebacker, more of a D tackle athlete here. We do have that Michael Jones running back here, some safeties and another corner down here. And then we'll continue to add points as we get more and more as the season goes on for some of these lower level guys. But there's going to be your focus as we start. Definitely expecting to be in some heated recruiting battles here. It's going to be a, a lofty but manageable class uh, that we're going for in year one. So just because of the way the schedule is shaking up here, we're not going to probably have any gameplay in our first episode of the rebuild here. Uh, but we are going to be able to get a pretty strong grasp on what our recruiting class is going to look like because we're going to go all the way up to that Iowa game and then conclude this episode. And then episode two is going to be a nice kickoff with that big Big Ten kickoff against Iowa. So we've got a bye week coming up. Hoping we can take care of UNLV here and start off the season strong. And it is going to be a 27-21 
tough win against UNLV, but we will take it. Excited to see the box score from that when this long advance is done. Unfortunately, uh, we are getting some bad news here. The only fullback that had any interest in coming to our school is committed to Auburn in the first week of the season, so that kind of stinks. Can always just try to go with the walk-on fullbacks, um, but it looks like there is one fullback here that popped up on the interest, and he doesn't look bad, Jamal King, so let's go after him instead. Only 27% locked in. As I look at our three Patreon prospects, two of you guys do want to come to the U, but Brandon, man, you are going to bleed us dry if we're going to try to compete with some of these schools uh, who are very interested in you as their quarterback. So I might just have to let you go, buddy. We have some options on the horizon here at Minnesota. Your playing time's not looking the best. So we're going to let Brandon go. Uh, we'll follow his journey as a quarterback wherever he ends up going. But other than that, we've made some decent headway here with uh, the two corners we want. That looks optimistic. Uh, we are going to be in some tough recruiting battles here. D-tackle, tight end. Uh, going to be a tough, scrappy recruiting battles there. Richard Coe looking like we might be able to get the 76 overall. He's the local guy from Plymouth, so that might be one of our better signings. And then some more tough recruiting battles here for guard, defensive end, uh, the middle linebacker, position of need. Looking pretty good there. And then these guys are all in pretty good shape as you go down the board. Uh, these guys were all very interested in us from the beginning. And they don't seem to be getting too heavily recruited, which is really nice because that will allow us to focus on uh, the really tough guys that we want. So nobody is ready for a visit. We're going to go ahead and advance. Next week we play FCS. By the way, we never checked our... Uh, stats from that week one game against UNLV. Uh, so Tanner Morgan, a good start, good clean game there, uh, but only eight for nine. And then for the rushing, Ibrahim, not the most efficient day. Rashad Bateman did go off in his debut, eight for 222, uh, piling up the stats. And then defensively, we get um, a interception, it looks like, uh, sack from Burns. I'm not sure what that was about the backup quarterback coming in and throwing three picks. Seems we may have had an in-game injury. Uh, could have led to us not <laughs> blowing out UNLV like expected. But a win is a win, as they say. Not a ton has changed in the recruiting realm. Still some tough battles there with some of our top guys. Um, but the bottom of the board is in pretty good shape. Uh, looks like we have 10 points sitting there unused. This linebacker is now getting pushed on by Michigan State. That's like really the only linebacker on our board. We want to make sure we can get him. I'm not worried about that yet, but want to keep an eye on that one. And uh, we have no visits ready quite yet, so we're going to advance against FCS Midwest and keep this thing rolling. Hopefully with Tanner Morgan in there all game, we can beat up FCS. No, just 24 points, so... Actually been more defense than offense early on. That's not what we expected necessarily. A lot of these top prospects ready for visits now, which is going to be nice. A lot of these guys probably already <laughs> scheduled up. We want to schedule them around these top schools. So we got the two corners. Let's have them in for the Iowa game. I think we should do the same for this tight end. We do have the benefit of it looks like most of the teams he's competing with are not potentially really good teams which will work in our favor if we can win let's get these offensive linemen in there as well it's a little early for visits but i think they're really gonna like seeing that iowa game looks like shea is completely <laughs> bought into us at this point we can reduce those points uh, hoping to join shea onto the team michigan state keeps closing on this linebacker so let's give him those points and then this fullback man we just can't compete here for a fullback Let's take him off the board. I, I'm not going to burn all these points on a fullback. And Iowa State just desperately wants Anthony Outlaw. You know what? You can have him. Unfortunately, Arkansas has gotten into the mix here for Michael Jones. Let's scout him and make sure he's worth it. He's solid, but honestly, if we lose him, I'm not going to cry about it. We have three freshman running backs. He's from New Jersey. I'm just going to kind of push him down here maybe we can get a visit maybe he creeps back up but i'm not going to burn a bunch of points on him i'm going to put a lot of those towards the uh, middle linebacker here and then these guys are in pretty good shape looks like we are going to lose brad davis is he worth Ooh, he might be worth bumping up here 
Let's get more into the mix on him. Bottom of the board, guys. We're still leading. Let's get some scholarships out there, though, while we got some points sitting around. Recruiting in the Big Ten can be a pain in the ass sometimes. Let's scout this um, tackle. Oh, he's a bust. Yeah, let's. we don't need to pour too much into him. What about this quarterback? Looks pretty good. Or at least half decent. We'll slide him up, but we'll leave him there for now. So advancing against San Jose State, and then next week is Iowa week. And we do beat San Jose State. We get the offense going much more here, 37-17. And it will be a battle of undefeated. So let's clean up the recruiting and set up for what is going to be an exciting episode two. Make sure you guys hit that like button. I'm going to try and get this uh, next episode up as soon as possible. If we get to a thousand likes, I will expedite that process. Post it as soon as I can. I think it's important that we get Will Adams in here before he gets to go to Michigan. This guy's already booked week five, so let's have him against Nebraska. Not that I'm trying to hold you guys hostage for likes. It's more just uh, if you guys are hitting that like button, it lets me know that you are really enjoying this content and you're an ex yeah, you're excited for the next episode. Uh, so that's all I mean by that. But we've got our visits locked in. Recruiting's looking pretty decent here. I don't think we're going to have some amazing class, but we're staying competitive despite missing some of the key perks that we need. Take a peek at our stats before we get out of here. Tanner Morgan, seven touchdowns, two picks. Does have a 911 yards through three games. That is really nice. Uh, Ibrahim, much better season after that first start was iffy. Rashad Bateman is going off. Chris Ottman bell looks good. And then uh, defensively, let's take a look. We got two and a half sacks from our outside linebacker freshman, James Gordon. Freshman outside linebacker, uh, Jaquandis Burns as well. Both these guys leading the, lead, uh, leading the team in sacks. Lots of uh, interceptions spread out here. So that is going to do it for episode one of the Row the Boat Dynasty. Again, guys, please do hit that like button. A thousand likes. I will uh, expedite and get episode two to you guys as soon as I possibly can busy times these days but i will do the best i hope you enjoyed this first episode i am fired up to take on the iowa hawkeyes at home in episode two so peace out everyone cheers and we'll see you for the next one